Welcome to Social Ella Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. I want to take a few minutes to speak about honor and obedience, but honor and obedience to the Lord. Oftentimes, whenever you hear about a so-called minister of the Lord who gets exposed for something that's unsavory, it is oftentimes because the Lord had given that person an opportunity to repent, but he or she persisted and end up getting exposed. Sometimes a person, because of continued behavior, ends up exposing him or herself. For example, David was a man after the Lord's heart. After an arduous journey, the Lord made David king over Israel. But then David he committed some serious sins against the Lord, as recorded in 2 Samuel 11. But David tried to cover up those, transgress those transgressions. He never truly repented. In 2 Samuel 12, the Lord sent Nathan the prophet to rebuke him, openly. Initially, the prophet told David a parable. But then the prophet followed up by delivering the following message from the Lord. So start in 2 Samuel 12, verse 7. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And that was quite a deliverance. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. And whenever the Lord stresses something twice or more, it's usually important. So he mentioned about taking Uriah's wife to be his wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the Son. And I'll state that again. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the Son. There are many ministers right now who are living in what people call secret sin but there's no such thing as secret sin because the Lord sees all he knows all and if ministers who are living in secret sin do not repent they will suffer the consequences they will suffer the consequences and some will suffer more than others because in Matthew 7 verses 21 through 23 there are people who come to the Lord speaking about the wonderful works and the other things they, they did in his name. And he will tell them to get away from him because he never knew them. When a person has to get away from Jesus, the place that they're going to is hell, eternal separation from the Lord. So failing to repent is no joke. Continue living in secret sin, as people like to say, it's no joke. So what David did secretly 
was going to be exposed. And not just to that generation, but to the entire world. Because every time a person reads the Bible, they hear about what David did. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel, before all the world, and before the sun. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord hath also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. Howbeit, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. So everything that David had done to cover up his transgressions with Bathsheba, Uriah's wife, and also Uriah, the Lord was getting ready to expose because he'd had enough. If Bathsheba carried that child to full term, you're looking at at least nine months that David had to repent to make it right with the Lord. But he kept on living in sin. He did not repent. So David was not living, living honorably and he was not living in obedience to the Lord. But the Lord gave him time to repent. And the child died. One of the things is that David actually humbled himself before the Lord. I'm going to look at another example of honor and obedience to the Lord. And by the way, another thing, David and Bathsheba conceived another child, Solomon. Solomon is in the genealogy of Christ. I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 1. But in the sixth verse, even though the Lord had selected Solomon as David's successor, he still is letting us know his displeasure regarding how David dishonored him. So it may have seemed like a reward that Solomon was David's successor. But it states in um, Matthew 1, 6. And Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. So David's transgressions followed him. But I'm going to speak another example of um, honor and obedience by speaking about Joseph. Start in verse 18 of Matthew 1. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, even though they were engaged, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. So that's an example of how honorable Joseph was. He could have put her out there, he could have accused her of adultery, and people would have stoned her to death because this thing about being pregnant by the Holy Ghost, it's like it would have taken a miracle in order to get her out of that one. But rather than doing that, he was going to quietly, in a sense, he was going to quietly divorce her. But in our terms, he was going to quietly break off the engagement. And it would have been a source of embarrassment, but at least he wasn't going to publicly expose her. And this is an example of how the Lord will give us a way out sometimes. But sometimes people actually choose to expose themselves. So rather than taking the Lord's quiet exit, so to speak, they choose to expose themselves. And this is one of the ways where people end up getting exposed because they refused to, or they refused to take the Lord's quiet way out. 
And it continues, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And he shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Another talking, another talking point is how the angel told Joseph something, but it was something that was already written in scripture. Similarly, if you receive a prophecy today, that prophecy should be grounded in scripture. It won't be like this one that Mary received because Jesus already came and that's it. There's no need for another event like that. But if you receive a prophecy, it should be grounded in the scripture. Even if it means that you have an encounter with an angel, whether in person or in a dream. Because the Bible also tells us that the devil masquerades as an angel of light. So we have to be careful. We have to ensure that things line up with scripture. It says, Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife so he was a honorable man and because the angel of the Lord told him that Mary was actually pregnant with the Holy Ghost he took her as his wife as opposed to divorcing her in accordance with Deuteronomy 24 verses 1 through 4 but this here is also a testament of how honorable Joseph was. In Matthew 1 verse 25, And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. So here you have Joseph was engaged to a virgin. Then he found out that she was pregnant and at the same time they could not consummate the marriage until after she had given birth and it also says knew her not until she brought forth her firstborn son there's some religious circles that make it seem as if Mary was a perpetual virgin well the Bible clearly tells us that Joseph did not have sex with Mary until after she had given birth. And the Bible says firstborn son because there were other children. And we see this when Jesus was grown and he was preaching and how Mary brought his brothers and sisters to basically pull him away. So there's a false teaching about Mary being a perpetual virgin. And more about Joseph's um, obedience. In Matthew 2, some verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. And it says by night to let us know that Joseph did not waste time obeying the angel of the Lord. And was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I have called my son. Then Herod when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wrath and sent forth, 
and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. And in all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled by the prophet, or question, then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy, meaning Jeremiah, the prophet, saying, In Ramah there was a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea, in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither, notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in the city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. And a part of the reason why the Lord was able to warn or why the Lord warned Joseph in a dream was because Joseph obeyed. So the Lord kept warning Joseph in, a, in dreams and he kept on obeying. There are times when the Lord is dealing with an individual and he will warn them in a dream. And it may not be warning of what others plan on doing, but the Lord may reveal a person's character, a person's behavior, things that he wants the individual to repent of, and the individuals may just simply fail to repent. The Lord may send prophets, messengers, to warn the individual, and the individual may fail to repent. And there comes a point when the Lord will stop warning the individual and will impose his judgment and will expose the individual publicly for failing to repent. Um, one of the hallmarks of this ministry is stressing the importance of having what could be called a personal relationship with the Lord, being led by His Holy Spirit, and having Christ being our only mediator between us and God, as being led by the Holy Spirit of the Lord. While human teachers are great, or at least they can be, we have to rely on the Holy Spirit above any person. We have to have a relationship with the Lord, and we definitely have to have the relationship so that whenever the Lord is letting us know, for example, that we're doing something that's displeasing to Him, that we take actions sooner rather than later, that we handle things privately, like how Joseph wanted to divorce Mary privately, that we do things privately so that things do not have to be exposed because we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And a part of the reason why you don't know about certain things about some people is because like what David did when he repented, even though it was too late, those individuals know how to recognize the signs when the Lord is trying to communicate something to them, and they know how to repent sooner rather than later. I hope this helps in your journey. The Lord is great about giving warning dreams, but those dreams aren't always to warn you about what other people are trying to do to you. Oftentimes, they're revealing the things the Lord sees about you that you need change. Things that need to cause you to repent. <laughs>